A few weeks later, Cass informed Fuel that they were facing financial troubles. The battle against the bandits had depleted their funds as they used the money to rebuild the villages, and securing food for the villagers so that they can get through the upcoming winter. Cass was concerned, especially because the bandit boss had escaped, and Fuel mentions that the bandit boss's capture would have fetched them a reward of 200 gold coins, also no one was willing to lend them money due to the upcoming winter. Cass thinks about lending it from the royal court's treasure, but Fuel is against it due to the high interest. Pastry wonders why his father didn't seek help from his own parents. He then learns that his father was a true Romeo, and eloped with his mother when their parents didn't accept their relationship. This is why they couldn't turn to Pastry's grandparents for assistance. Following this, Mark and Lumi learned about the financial troubles. Pastry inquired about Lumi's recovery, and she mentioned that she was healing well but still experienced some pain. Mark tries to comfort Lumi, and Pastry asks him to stop flirting, and Mark tells he's jealous because he's still single. Mark then suggests expanding their farmland as a solution to their money problem, but Pastry mentions that it would require both time and money. Lumi suggests selling Pastry's bonka pies. Although Pastry loves the idea, he thinks that they would have to make a lot of pies to generate any profits. Mark then proposes that Pastry should teach magic, but Lumi mocks him, saying that even if he learns it, he would never be able to use it properly because he is a dumbass. Lumi believes that using magic is not a bad idea, so she asks Pastry to demonstrate some magic for inspiration. He recalls brainstorming sweet-making ideas with his friends in his previous life. Pastry then requests Lumi and Mark to sketch pictures in the dirt. They both draw images in the soil, leading to a lover's quarrel. Subsequently, Pastry employs his magic to tattoo their drawings onto their hands, but it's temporary and will fade in two days. Lumi then suggests that he copy something else directly instead of their drawings, sparking an idea for Pastry. After that we see Cass asking Agnes to seek help from her parents, but she thinks it will be too difficult. Just then Pastry arrives with his plan, he reminds Cass about his sister Josie's marriage, and tells him that for her marriage proposals Cass has to introduce her physically everywhere. But Pastry shows his magic, and copies his mother's image onto a blank wood. He tells Cass, instead of bringing his daughter Josie to every meeting, he can use this picture. Basically, Pastry's idea is to make parents a marriage broker by carrying a picture of their child instead of actually bringing them, and Cass is impressed by this idea of selling the picture to the nobles. They worry about exposing Pastry's magic, but he mentions that they can tell everyone that his magic ability is to make photos, and use this as a cover to hide his actual ability. Agnes then approaches Pastry to do some touch-up on her portrait to remove the wrinkles, and looks like Pastry will have to use his magic for Photoshop as well. After some days, Pastry and his father visited Countess Ratesh to seek compensation for the damages incurred during the bandit battle. Ratesh had already expected their visit and planned to smoothly send him away. Pastry and his dad entered the room, and she greeted them, introducing herself to Pastry. Pastry remembered his dad informing him that Ratesh is the current owner of the land, as her predecessors died in conflict. She then invited them for tea, and Cass praised the flavor and aroma of the tea. Pastry was excited to have a cookie, however, it wasn't up to his standard. Retesh complimented Cass for managing his land, but he credited it to Pastry. As she complimented Pastry, he took this opportunity to shift the conversation to the bandit attacks. Ritesh initially tried to escape the situation by feigning ignorance, but Pastry outsmarted her and told her that they were ready to hand over the bandits to the king. They also showed a sword with her family crest, which was carried by one of the bandits, and Ritesh realized that she was trapped. Pastry mentioned that since they couldn't stop the bandits, the bandits destroyed Pastry's land, and now they need compensation. She offered 100 gold coins as compensation, but Pastry negotiated further and settled on 150 gold coins. Although Ritesh is a bit annoyed, she thinks that Pastry is an exceptional boy. She then asks him about his weird reaction to tasting her cookies, 
and he starts giving advice on preparing the cookie, and goes on about it, only to be stopped by his father. After that, Pastry copies Ratesha's face on a scarf and presents it as a gift. In the following weeks, we see Pastry and his dad invited to a banquet by Duke Kattelsek, who is also the central military commander. Kaz congratulates him on his grandson's coming of age. The Duke introduces his grandson, Squail, who graduated from the military boarding school as the top of his class. Squail greets Cass but is very nervous because he admires warriors and was looking forward to meeting Cass, who is widely popular among youngsters due to his deeds. Following this, Pastry introduced himself and managed to impress the Duke with his good manners. He also wished Squail well, who was still nervous. The Duke mentions that Pastry is more dependable than his grandson and asks Pastry about his coming of age, as he had heard that Pastry has acquired magic ability. Pastry confirms this, and the Duke asks him to demonstrate his magic. Pastry then uses his copy magic to create a print of a girl on the cloth, and everyone is impressed by the magic. Pastry then mentions it as a gift for Squail from him and the Margrave of Huberek. They learn that the girl is Lady Petra, the third daughter of Lord Huberek. Pastry and his dad had visited Huberek before coming there, and they had asked them to introduce their daughter to them. Squail seems lovestruck by seeing the beauty of Petra, and Pastry mentions that she will be celebrating her coming of age next month. He invites Squail, and before the Duke could say anything, Squail accepts it. Duke thinks that Squail answered without considering his position and fell for their marriage plan. He thinks that Pastry is not an ordinary boy and shouldn't be underestimated. Duke mentions that it will be trouble for Squail to go to their territory, but Pastry proposes using his dad's magic for teleportation. Squail is happy about it and immediately agrees, much to the Duke's dismay. After that, Pastry whispered secretly to the Duke about Lord Huberic's ulterior motives. Pastry explained to him that he believes Lord Huberic planned to use their military power to end the long years of conflict, and for this reason, he may have wished to join his daughter with the Duke's grandson. The Duke thanked Pastry for the info and decided to join the celebration. Pastry was happy that his plan worked, and Duke trusted Cass to assist them during their travel. Later, Squail asked Pastry about what Lady Petra likes, and Pastry mentioned that even though he doesn't know her taste, the last time he presented her with baked sweets. Squail then asked if he could fulfill his request, and Pastry was excited as he thought he was about to get an order for making sweets. Unfortunately, the perv lord wants the lolly girl's image to be more erotic, which he probably plans to use later to build his forearm muscles, and Pastry thinks that men will be men, regardless of the world. A few days later, we see how the citizens repaired the broken buildings. Fuel mentions that the provision of food and firewood among the citizens is going smoothly, and all expenses are handled by the Mordlin family. Fuel asks if it's necessary to spend so much money, to which Cass mentions that as a leader, he can't allow his people to suffer. As they talked, Pastry entered the room with letters from Duke and Huberek. Cass read the letters, and they said they would receive 20,000 silver coins. He informs that both Petra and Squail are soon to be engaged. Pastry was happy to hear that, as he remembered that it took him two days to get the photo of Petra because her father was too picky. Cass then mentions that they will also receive 30 gold pieces as an advance, and it's the money for guarding Petra. This is because many parties will be against the marriage, especially the ones who want to continue the conflict. Fuel mentions that even though the engagement is secret, the news could still spread, and Pastry asks if they are referring to the church. Cass confirms it and tells him that the church can't be trusted, as they will spill the beans if they get enough money. Cass mentions that he will be able to teleport Petra to the capital, but he wouldn't be able to teleport the guards. Fuel mentions that they can hire mercenaries as guards for Petra in the capital, but there could be spies among them. Since this is a tricky situation, he suggests rejecting the job, but for Cass this is the best opportunity for him to gain the trust of the two strongest leaders in the country, so he decides to accept the job. Pastry also thinks they should accept the job, 
but his motive is to build the land of sweets. Pastry then gets an idea and asks his father to find a place that is surrounded by thick walls without windows or an entry. Fuel and Cass understood his idea, which is to use the room of the sanctification ceremony as a pretense to prolong Petra's stay until the time for her engagement. After that, Pastry gave his father a receipt for the transactions with the traders. Cass scolded him when he saw that Pastry had spent a lot of money on his sweets ingredients and cut off his allowance. Following that, Cass visited Donakel Mill Huberek to escort his daughter. He also brought Pastry along with him under the pretense of accompanying them, as he couldn't reveal to him that he's using his nine-year-old son for his plan. Huberek thanked Pastry because the marriage plan was successful due to his magic. He then invited them to his carriage where his daughters were already waiting. Petra thanked him for the baked sweets, and Pastry promised to fill her mouth with his sweet stuff next time. Pastry joined them in the carriage and greeted her sister, Licorice, but she seemed sad for some reason, and Pastry was surprised that his riz didn't work on her. The journey started, and their plan was to first go to the nearby church under the pretense of a sanctification ceremony. Then they would use teleportation to go to the capital city church and use the sanctification ceremony room until the time of the engagement, while others would stand guard. On the way, Huberek was worried and counting on Cass to protect Petra. Upon arrival, Cass and Huberek surveyed the area, and just then, they were attacked. Cass fought with Huberek against the enemies. Suddenly, one of the men entered the carriage and planned to attack them, but Pastry protected the girls and managed to withstand his attacks. When another assassin tried to attack Pastry, Cass protected him in time. As a result, they defeated the assassins and forced them to retreat. After that, Pastry saw the girls' scared faces, and they went into the basement to protect Petra. As they went down, Licorice was lagging behind and she was scared, but Pastry held her hand and comforted her, and it looks like his riz is finally working on her. After that, we learn that Petra was sad because she was always comparing herself to her twin sister. Also, she thinks that even though she behaved badly towards Pastry, his attitude towards her hasn't changed. They reach the basement, where they use Cass's spell to teleport to the capital city. Meanwhile, we see a nobleman named Armeyer, who had hired a group of mercenaries to kidnap Petra, offering them ten gold coins. However, as the mercenaries left the house, they found the mission suspicious. Their leader suspected that Armeyer had two motives, first, to disgrace House Cattlesec, and second, to regain his noble title by saving the girl and marrying her himself. Later, we see many guards in front of the church, and Pastry is impressed by the security, as their household could never amass such a force. Following that, we see Petra is nervous about her engagement. Pastry approaches her, and she mentions that Squail seems like a wonderful person based on the photo he showed her, and Pastry is proud of being their marriage broker. Afterward, Fuel reported to Cass that even the nobles from faraway territories are coming to the event. Cass then asks Pastry to accompany Licorice until Petra's sanctification ceremony is over. Fuel whispers to him to use his riz on her, and Cass warns him not to teach his son to be a playboy like him. Meanwhile, we see Armeyer, who thinks that the ceremony should be ending now and is planning to give the Duke a taste of his revenge. We then see a central army officer, Vezin, who is there to escort Petra. Huberek and his daughter then go with him in his carriage. Cass is glad that everything is going well, and they plan to send licorice after they arrive at their engagement. However, he asks Fuel to keep his guard up because of the large crowd. Meanwhile, Pastry is in the reception room with Petra and her escort, Sarah. She keeps a strict guard on licorice, making Pastry uncomfortable. Just then, Pastry hears something, and the ground below them starts to shine. A big hole appears, and Pastry and Licorice fall into the dark hole. Cass arrives and concludes that this was done by magic. He commands Fuel to explain the situation to the Duke and Huberek, and then he jumps into the hole. After that, we see Pastry waking up, realizing that they had been kidnapped by the mercenaries. 
he wonders why he was taken, then realizes that they were after licorice. On the other side, Cass follows through the hole and ends up outside the church, realizing that he has lost them. Meanwhile, Licorice wakes up, and Pastry comforts her. He asks one of the mercenaries about their plan, to which he mentions that unlike the girl, Pastry will probably be killed. Pastry then puts on an act, and tells him that he will lose 200 gold coins if he kills him, as he is the son of a noble. Also, if they are kidnapped by a noble, the mercenaries can demand even more. The mercenary wonders how much they can receive, and Pastry realizes that their mastermind is a noble. Pastry then analyzes the place he's held in, and based on the condition of the mansion, thinks that it's someone who has been stripped of nobility ten years ago. He remembers the list of threatening names for Petra's escort and deduces that this is done by the former Duke of House Armeyer. He then uses his magic to transcribe their location onto the ribbon, and teleports it to his father. Cass receives the message and plans for the rescue. Fuel asks him to teleport him to the Margrave as that would be faster to receive backup, and he teleports him. We then see that the kidnapper boss arrives. He tries to attack Petra, but Pastry teleports in front of him, surprising them, but he knocks him down. He is angry as they didn't receive any gold because they've kidnapped the wrong girl, and the engagement is going as planned. Pastry learns that their real intention was to kidnap Petra. The boss then plans to eliminate all witnesses and tries to attack Licorice, but just then Pastry cuts him with his sword. He then gets ready for a face-off with the boss. This is where the video ends, thanks for watching, and see you in the next part.